Good morning YouTube, it's your boy Yifang with another video. So, today we're doing a setup tour. Uh, this was requested by a viewer of the channel, and I'm going to keep it nice and short, or at least I'm going to try to, but knowing me, that's going to be a big challenge. So let's jump straight into it. So this is the AW2521HF. This costs about $600 when I bought it. To me, all the 25 inch 240 monitors are really just the same thing, uh, with the exception of maybe the Zowie XL2546K, which I also had in my uh, previous place, but I honestly didn't like it enough to rebuy it, and it's way more expensive. I think IPS panels are so much nicer to use, even if they're slightly slower, and honestly, that difference is barely noticeable when you're in gameplay. Like, yes, I saw the difference between Dayak and the faster thing. Do I think it was worth it? Hell no. I do not recommend that by any means anymore, right? IPS panel all the way. On the table, we have an MBH arm sleeve. This is a basketball shooting sleeve by Nike. Uh, it's like $40 over here. I play with an arm sleeve. You don't necessarily need to. For me, the bigger difference was that because my arms got really sweaty uh, on the previous mouse pads and so on, they would get stuck. So I'd like play and then oh, my arm stops moving because I'm just getting sweaty. So this kind of helped fix that problem. However, I do have to say, uh, this doesn't always work with every mouse pad. So a prime example would be the Artisan Zero, where the cloth on cloth just stops moving, and then you actually have additional drag or friction, whatever you want to call it. The arm sleeve itself gets stuck on the mouse pad. So, on to this, my main mouse pad, the Hayate Otsu. So the Hayate Otsu is one of the more expensive mouse pads on the market. Right now in Australia, if you buy it from the local retailer, it costs $110. Uh, if you buy it off the Artisan website, 70 to 80 but then you have to include DHL shipping, which makes it a bit more expensive. This is my personal favorite mouse pad. It's a bit more speed than control, but I play on a low sense, and I use control skates on the uh, mouse, so it really does help with it, and I think this is the best balance I can get between control and speed. The mouse is a Pulsar X2. So on the Pulsar X2, I also have core pads control skates and a core pads grips. The mouse itself costs $150, and the skates and the grips, both are like $17 each. So all in all, after some quick math, uh, including shipping, this mouse would have cost me about $190 to reach its current form. So note that I will be getting the uh, Bruce Lee edition of the X2 when it releases on January 16 in Australia. Um, if you guys do plan on buying the Pulsar X2, make sure you buy it then. I do recommend getting the Bruce Lee edition because that has uh, optical switches and improves on quality control. Uh, therefore, it's just going to be a better functioning mouse. It will be slightly more expensive, costing $190 retail without everything else, whereas normally this one would only be $150 in Australia, but I do think it is worth that price difference. Stay tuned for a quick review of the Bruce Lee Edition when that releases, just so we can make a quick comparison to the uh, regular X2 and see if they actually fix everything. Now, over here we have a microphone and a arm. So this is a Bayer Dynamic Fox USB. I'm only doing some streaming and playing games, therefore it really doesn't matter what microphone I'm using because all the mics are decent quality and you can barely notice the difference considering all the compressed audio and all of that stuff. So I bought this when it was on sale and it came with the arm. It was also the most convenient one because it's USB rather than a XLR. And I think in total this costs like just over $200 for the mic plus the arm at the time. Onto this webcam here. Right, this is a Logitech C922 Pro Stream webcam, and I've had this for over six years. So I actually got this back in uh, high school when a friend of mine won a esports competition in high school, and I won a different esports competition in high school. And so I had different pricing to what he had, but we did a trade because he wanted what I had, and I needed this webcam since I think I got like a mouse and a mouse pad, but it was useless to me because I already had those. We did a trade offer, and here we are. So I've kept this ever since. Maybe in the future, if this channel does really well, I'm going to invest into a full camera instead of using the phone to record stuff. So this will make your life a lot easier. Back onto the table. This is a Razer Huntsman V2 TKL keyboard. I got this for free for my time with Legacy. So they gave this out to us about a week before its actual release date and announcement. At the time, it would have been more like $300 upon release, but now it's only 229 and I'm pretty sure with uh, the Christmas sales, it's like $159 right now. Um, really good keyboard, even though it's really cheap. I'm not the biggest keyboard person, but I know that for a fact that this keyboard plays really well for games. In most cases, custom keyboards aren't designed for gaming performance. They're designed to look good, feel good, sound good, whatever, and so on. Raw gaming performance, it's not necessarily better. And I think, honestly, the th only three keyboards on the market I would recommend for gaming performance would be this Razer Huntsman V2 TKL, 
are the Steel Series Apex Pro and the Wu Ting HE60 or HE whatever, right? And those come all at different price points. So this will, this Razer keyboard would be the cheapest of the bunch, and then the Steel Series is a bit more expensive. The Wu Ting has its issues in terms of availability and wait time, but if you can get your hands on one of those, definitely do it. Okay, over here we move to the audio corner, and this is my favorite corner on my desk, right? This is where all the money is. Everything over here costs significantly more than anything else on the table by an entire magnitude. It's not even on the same scale as, say, a keyboard or a mouse. We'll start with this black box here, right? This is a cord cutest DAC, right? Look at it, it's so cute. And the retail price in Australia is $2,600, right? If you don't know what a DAC is, it's called a digital to analog converter. Uh, the short summary is that all information stored inside a PC in terms of audio is going to be digital. Whereas sound, audio, comes out analog. If you don't know what analog and digital are, uh, you can go do your own research. Zeros and ones versus actual waves. And so therefore, in the middle process, there has to be a thing called a digital to analog converter, and that's what this does. Now, your PC motherboard itself will have a digital to analog converter. That is usually really shit quality, and there's a lot of interference inside. All right, if you can have a headphone jack in your PC, then you'll have a digital to analog converter and an amplifier on the motherboard, right? That is bad quality. This one, Cost 2,600 Australian dollars. Now, on the side here, this is my Christmas present to myself. Burson Soloist 3X Grand Tour. As you can see, Grand Tour. This thing's a machine, it's really well built, and this cost normally 3,400 Australian dollars, but because it was on sale, it cost me only 2,700. This is an amplifier, right? What an amplifier does is, well, it powers your headphones or your IAMs or whatever, you plug it into the amplifier. As I said before, the motherboard will have an amplifier too, but it's just poor quality. Now, I don't want to explain too much about the amplifier, but just essentially understand that without an amplifier, you cannot control volume of your headphones. Uh, that would be the simple way to explain it. And in a lot of other cases, uh, you need an amplifier to actually power your headphones correctly because motherboards and PC audio cannot supply enough power and current into a headphone to make it actually sound the best that it should. Now onto the table is a pair of IEMs. So this is the pair of IEMs that I personally actually play games with and use the most. The Thea Audio V16 Divinity and it costs 2,350 Australian dollars. Right, in USD it's priced at like 1,500 I think. Normally I take this on the go, this is what I use to like walk around and go on the bus and etc. I don't use it as much at home, but recently I have been playing games with this simply because I can maintain consistency that way. And every time I go to a LAN event, I go to a different setup, I can bring this with me and just play using this. Therefore, I can stay a lot more consistent than having to, you know, try bring everything here. And obviously I don't want to bring this stuff over because, well, that's a lot of money to risk. Now onto the headphones. This is the Meze Audio Imperian Elite. Down the bottom are the uh, replacement ear pads. So you can change ear pads, they're magnetic and you just uh, literally pull it off. Right, it comes off and you can stick those on. The difference is, is that depending on the air pad you use, uh, this one has a bit more bass and etc. like sounds a bit more fun. This one is a bit more detail oriented, but you do lose a bit of bass. The Meze Audio Elite costs 4,000 US dollars, which now in Australia means 7,000 Australian dollars due to currency exchange. This is pretty much my end game. I do a lot of music listening on this and I'm pretty sure most of you don't even know headphones can cost up to this much. But let me just tell you that audio, especially high-end audio, is an entire different world. And people are like, oh, I spent $1,000 on a keyboard. That's crazy. I'm like, wow, good for you, man. Any piece of audio equipment I have costs easily over $1,000 because that is an entire different spectrum. Just in case you guys didn't know, there's like speakers out there that cost a million dollars to run. One pair of speakers plus the amplifier needed to power it will cost you like a million Australian dollars. That's something you guys need to know, or hopefully you don't need to know so that you guys can save your money. This is a Wu Audio headphone stand. I forgot what the exact model was called. And this costs $300 here in Australia. You'll be like, why the hell did you spend $300 on a headphone stand? Well, I mean, why did I spend all this money on this anyway, right? If I, I might as well go all in. I wanted it to look good. This is one of the most solid headphone stands I've ever seen, ever had. It's really big because these headphones are really big, right? This stuff's not small. And the average headphone stand is going to struggle to hold them and not look good. So I really like this stand. Here's a little Wu Audio uh, thing on it. And it's really solid, solid aluminum. The heavy duty, if I pick it up and smack someone with this stand, it'll probably kill them. Hopefully I don't need to ever do that. If there's someone in my house and I need to protect myself, maybe this will have to be the solution. I mean, it's like 1.5 kg maybe, it's really good. 
So as for the desk itself, it's a Britek electric sit stand desk where you buy the legs, the uh, stand itself and the table board separately, and then you drill your own holes. There'll be like some design markings from when I was like drawing these, uh, back when I first bought it. I think the desk itself costs maybe $600 all in all. Here's the uh, electric motor and it just comes up and down. Very nice and convenient for you to remember your own numbers. For me, I always play it on 75 centimeters high. As for my chair, I am sitting on a generic Secret Lab Titan 2022 edition and I'm pretty sure it costs about 750 Australian dollars. It's the uh, stealth colorway. So now we move over here onto the PC. Right, I'm actually refilming this section and I took the glass panel off because it was reflecting too much light so you guys can't really see what's going on properly. So the case is a Fractal Design Torrent RGB and to match that there's also the Fractal Design Celsius S36 Plus Prisma for the cooler. Um, the reason was because the case came with case fans so I was like oh I have this OCD I need the fans to all match and therefore I bought a Fractal cooler because that would come with Fractal fans. Now down the bottom two really really large 180 mm helicopter pads right on the back here is a 140 mm and then over here in the front we have six 120 mm's on the radiator so there's the three over here then this is the radiator and then on the other side of the radiator in the inside here there's actually three more fans so there's six all on each side of the radiator now that doesn't necessarily do much for airflow but i just liked it because it looks cool otherwise you can't see these fans in the front and if you could see the fans in the front, you can't see these from the inside. Now, as for the configuration, the bottom fans are all sucking air and blowing them into the graphics card. Uh, all six fans in the front are optimized to go inwards, and then that is the exhaust. So normally this one exhaust fan blows everything out into the window, which is the cooler place. So that's how I maintain the temperatures in here. EVGA Platinum 850 watt power supply up in this corner. The board is a Asus ROG Z690-A. So I built this PC about a year ago. This was when the um, 12th generation Intel just released. And that's also why inside there is a 12700KF. So 32 GB of DDR4 3600 megahertz RAM. I actually previously already had 32 GB in two times 16, but I was like, oh, I wanna fill up all the slots. So I side graded my RAM, sold that out, bought the exact same RAM back again, but in four times eight instead of two times 16. Cable mod for extensions. I actually use the OG power supply cables. I didn't buy full replacements. So these are just extensions from the original included power cables. So you'll see them if you went behind the PC. The graphics card is a EVGA FTW3 3070. The story of how I got this is actually pretty interesting. I got quite lucky. So some guy back when the graphics card had a global shortage, like everything was like super out of stock for months on end, ordered this a super long time ago. And then when they finally got it to store ready for him to pick up, he's like, oh, no, nah, it's all good. I don't need it anymore. And the store's like, okay, well, guess we just have one extra to sell. So time to put this back up onto the page. And it just so happened at that exact moment they put this back onto the page, I'm on the website refreshing like, hey guys, when's the next time I can get a graphics card, man? Why is it a three months wait, man? Just give me a graphics card, man. My graphic card is dying, man. And then, oh, one in stock. What the hell? Am I tripping? Is this a joke to you? Are you messing with me here? All right, so I press add to car and then I press the checkout button and I insert my credit card details and let them take my money and... My money was just gone, it just disappeared out of my bank account. And I'm like, oh, oh shit, I just got a graphics card. Let's fucking go, let's fucking go, dude. And so I speed, I did a speed run through the uh, store. No speeding, but uh, you know, I just went as soon as I could and picked it up, shoved it into the PC. I got a huge frame rate boost back when I was playing Overwatch all the time. And so, yeah, that's how I got this. So this was the only part that was in my old PC uh, when I built this one, all right? And then, Nothing else that's too important to note, but otherwise gets the job done, gets everything done. So in this case, the PC would come down to about $5,000 when I first built it. Um, I think I spent nearly four grand at the time without including the graphics card and the graphics cards were super expensive as well. So that's this bad boy. That is the end of this uh, video. So that's everything that's actually on my desk and that's my setup. So one other thing you guys might be interested in is some of these esports jerseys I've collected. So when we went to play in Brazil, uh, we actually got two of our own shirts. So here's my New Zealand one. Um, Red Bull can't spell New Zealand for some reason, but I had two of these. So at the end of the event, I traded with the Macedonian team captain, who was one of our best friends that we met there. So I have one of his, one of mine, and he has the same. Now this was from an Overwatch team I played on, and uh, 
76. I played Soda 76, that's why I picked this number. Now, here's another Legacy shirt for Valorant. Here's some more shirts and more jerseys and yeah. So that'll be the end of the video.